My name is Josef Jankovic. Uh, I'm professor of neurology, distinguished chair in women disorders and founder and director of Parkinson Disease Center and Women Disorders Clinic, Department of Neurology, Baylor College of Medicine, Houston, Texas. Hi, this is Scott Pomeroy. I'm the Bronson Crothers Professor of Neurology at Harvard Medical School and chair of the Department of Neurology at Boston Children's Hospital. Hello, my name is Nancy J. Newman and I am a professor of neurology and ophthalmology at the Emory University School of Medicine, where I direct the neuro-ophthalmology unit. Since the initial publication in 1991, Neurology and Clinical Practice, or NICP, has served as a textbook of neurology that comprehensively covers the clinical neurosciences and provides not only clear descriptions of neurological diseases and their pathophysiology, but also a practical approach to their diagnosis and management. Over the years, NICP has become known as the Bible of Neurology, considered by many to be the most comprehensive review of neurology. It has been referred to as a one-stop shop for clinical neurology. But it is important to emphasize that in addition to its encyclopedic content, the book contains practical information provided by the most highly regarded and most experienced experts in their fields. I joined NICP in 2004 for the fourth edition, replacing the late David Marsden. Following the publication of the last edition, NICP 7 our colleague, Dr. Robert Darrow, decided to step down and in recognition of his distinguished contributions from the inception, the book has been named as Bradley and Darrow's Neurology and Clinical Practice, starting in, you know, with uh, NICP-8. I'm delighted that Dr. Nancy Newman has joined the current team of editors. Dr. Newman is Professor of Ophthalmology and Neurology and the Director of Section on Neuro of Neuro-Ophthalmology at Emory University School of Medicine. In addition to Dr. Newman and myself, the other editors are Dr. Scott Pomeroy, Neurologist-in-Chief and Chairman, Department of Neurology, Boston Children's Hospital, Harvard Medical School, and John Mazioda, Vice Chairman of UCLA Health Sciences and uh, CEO of UCLA Health. In the uh, preface to the 1991 first edition of this book, we forecasted that major technological and research advances would soon reveal the underlying cause and potential treatment of an ever-increasing number of neurological diseases. The three decades since that initial prediction have been marked with the excitement of new discoveries resulting from uh, the blossoming of neurosciences uh, and uh, uh, related fields. Neurology has been gradually transformed from primarily a diagnostic specialty uh, to therapeutically oriented discipline. Although this book is chiefly intended for neurologists, many other specialists, including psychiatrists, psychologists, neurosurgeons, physiatrists, and basic neuroscientists will benefit from the book. Over 6,500 copies of the previous edition and ICP-7, a two volume book have been sold in addition to 500 electronic books. It should be noted that the print book also contains a code to access uh, the ebook online, so it does receive uh, impressive electronic usage. The book has been translated into Spanish, Greek, and Turkish. The NICP 7 edition had 2,348 pages, and the current 8th edition has over 2,500 pages and 114 chapters. In fact, we added four new chapters to, uh, in NICP-8, uh, chapter 43 on ocular functional and structural investigations, chapter 56, transition to adult care for youth uh, uh, with chronic neurological disorders, chapter 27, palliative and uh, end-of-life care in neurological diseases, and chapters uh, 111, cerebral palsy. We also added 102 new videos. 
The eighth edition has undergone considerable revision with new chapters on palliative care and transition of care from childhood to adulthood, a completely revised chapter on neonatal neurology, new video content on movement disorders and child development, and thoroughly updated chapters on many current topics in neurology. Most notably, advances in genetics and neuroimaging are widely integrated throughout the book. These advances reflect the fact that we've entered a new and exciting era in neurology in which treatments are now available or are being developed for diseases such as spinal muscular atrophy that previously had no treatment. The new eighth edition of Neurology in Clinical Practice is an up-to-date compendium of all of neurology at your fingertips. This new edition has been revamped and reorganized with new authors, new content, and especially new videos. So advances in genetics, molecular biology, pharmacology, imaging, and surgery have revolutionized our approach to neurological disorders. Pathogenesis targeted therapies coupled with more effective symptomatic management have improved outcomes and changed the course of patients with many neurological diseases. Therapies are now available that slow the course of diseases such as multiple sclerosis and other autoimmune disorders, neurologic and systemic neoplasms and spinal muscular atrophy, which until the past several years were relentlessly progressive. Advances in genetics such as whole genome sequencing not only aid in the diagnosis of diseases, but provide insights into the mechanisms of the disease, eventually leading to precision medicine, an approach for disease treatment and prevention that takes into account individual variability in genes, environment, and lifestyle. Advances in neuroimaging now uh, enable the precise identification of functional regions uh, and fine neuroanatomy of the human brain in health and disease. The important and challenging problems of neuroprotection are being addressed in both neurodegenerative disorders and acute injuries to the nervous system, such as stroke, hypoxic brain injury, and trauma. New advances in immunology and the study of gut flora have important implications in the understanding of gut-brain interaction of many neurological disorders, including Parkinson's disease. Everything in neurology is hot right now. We are on the cusp of so many new diagnoses via genetics and so many new therapies for entities we have always deemed untreatable. Gone is the old saying, diagnose and adios, or neurologists don't cure disease, they just admire it. Yes. Select a mentor early in your career who can inspire you and, and guide you. Such mentor should not be a tormentor. One of the critical goals for academic neurologists such as myself is to inspire more medical students to choose careers in neurology. It is my hope that medical students become excited about neurosciences and clinical neurology and eventually follow their newfound passion to become a neuroscientist or a clinical neurologist. With only five neurologists per 100,000 US population, there is currently a severe shortage of neurologists with expected increasing shortfall in the near and distant future. Finally, once you decide to pursue neurology, you should buy NICP as go-to reference text for an in-depth learning during your residency, fellowship, and practice. Those of you in medical school will be part of this exciting new era in which formerly incurable neurologic diseases are now responding to therapies that target the basic mechanisms of disease. Medical students who are puzzle solvers, who enjoy interacting with patients, and who want to be on the cutting edge of medical advances should consider a career in neurology. You'll never regret it. Mm -hmm.